meeting so very well uh, that I think it will be one of the excellent conferences on diabetes in India. Heartiest congratulations to you and all the other uh, team members. I'm going to talk to you on a topic on which I normally don't talk, and that is gestational diabetes medicine or GDM. Specifically, I'm going to talk about early GDM, and I hope I can convince you about the importance of early GDM, what it is, and what to do if you diagnose early GDM. Now, what is early GDM? Gestational diabetes mellitus or GDM is traditionally diagnosed between 24 to 28 weeks of gestation. In fact, if you look at all the international guidelines, the American guidelines, the European guidelines, they only talk about screening for GDM in the second trimester. In the first trimester, if at all, they say screen, it is to rule out pre-existing diabetes or diabetes which is complicating pregnancy. That's the only reason. They are not expecting that there will be GDM in the first trimester. But in India, we have always known that there is an earlier form of uh, hyperglycemia which is not pre-existing diabetes, which is not even pre-diabetes, which can be detected in the early part of the pregnancy in the first trimester. This is what is called as early GDM. Now, although we have been talking about it for quite some time now, more recently, I think internationally recognition is coming for this early GDM. And that's why I thought it was very important to talk about this at this research meeting, because many of us probably would like to collaborate on this particular topic. So what is the definition of early GDM? Earlier diagnosis of GDM, which is made before 24 weeks, is called as early gestational diabetes or eGDM for short. This is a term which we have coined. Now, there is an increasing prevalence of type 2 diabetes. Everybody knows that. And it also comes at a very young age. So definitely you have to screen in the first trimester or even at the first booking. Because otherwise you're going to miss diabetes. which is complicating. So diabetes can be very silent. You'll miss that. But when you screen that and if you find that it's not diabetes and it's not normal but somewhere in between, then that is when this early GDM comes up. Now, just to again put it in the proper context, since now we are talking about an early GDM, what do we call the usual GDM that we normally diagnose? So we have given a term, conventional GDM or CGDM. And I'll be using these terms throughout in this presentation. So we have CGDM and EGDM. So CGDM or conventional GDM is diagnosed in 24 to 28 weeks. Sometimes even later, even 30, 32 weeks it can come. EGDM is diagnosed during early pregnancy. There is no strict definition, but it's in the first trimester usually, and usually before 12 weeks of uh, gestation. How do you diagnose early GDM? Now, as I mentioned, when you screen in the first trimester, if your fasting blood sugar is more than 126 and the HbA1c is more than 6.5, you already have diabetes, and that is diabetes complicating pregnancy. In 2010, based on the HAPO study, the IADPSG criteria was proposed. And what they said was that if you screen before 12 weeks or in the first trimester of pregnancy, if your fasting is more than 92, but below 126, because above 126 is diabetes. So between 92 to 126, you call out to 125, you call it as early GDM. Later on, IADPSG has been having a rethink about this. What is the exact definitions and this will undergo changes, but this is what we currently use, 92 to 125 in the first trimester of pregnancy. Obviously, below 92 will be considered normal. Now, when we started working on this, uh, we are part of what is called as a STRIDE study, and I'll talk to you about that, stratification of risk of early pregnancy. This is in collaboration with Dr. Uh, Sarvanan Ponusami, whose uh, name you can uh, see here. And um, so, uh, this is uh, Dr. Sarap Konasami, who is our uh, collaborator in the University of Warwick. Now, Hannah, Wesley Hannah, is our PhD student, and she has devoted her entire PhD topic uh, to early GDM or eGDM. In fact, it is her publications which I'm going to quote. And we also have collaborators in uh, Australia, 
uh, Eric Martin and uh, Kevin McNamara and Vincent Versace. All these are people are from the Deakin University, and they are actually Hannah's uh, uh, PhD supervisor guides because she's doing a PhD from Deakin University, but working at MDRF. So Hannah, her first job was to do a systematic review. What all has been published in EGDM? There was no such uh, review before that. So she published this last year in Acta Diabetologia, and it's a massive piece of work. Every paper published on early GDM she reviewed in the systematic review. Basically, there were 58 studies which are screened for GDM before 24 weeks. And the prevalence of eGDM, she found, varied from 0.7% to 36.8%. Why? Because a wide range in diagnostic criteria were used. Different sampling frames, different criteria were used. So some had low prevalence, some had very high prevalence. And in that paper, based on the other's work which has been done, we found that BMI, previous history of GDM, family history of diabetes, and multiparity were the risk factors for early GDM. She went on in that same systematic review to look at birth outcomes. And this was reported in 23 studies where she showed that macrosomia, cesarean delivery, hypertension, preterm delivery, shorter dystocia, the usual things that we see with GDM were also seen in eGDM. Management, the need for insulin was actually higher because they're getting it at a younger, at an at a earlier stage of, uh, of the gestation. They have more severe diabetes and therefore the A1C is higher and the need for insulin, insulin doses all are higher. And when you looked at the postpartum dysglycemia from the reported studies, a higher incidence of type 2 diabetes was seen after the delivery in women who had eGDM compared to the conventional GDM. So it looks as if it's a little more severe form of GDM, and that's why it is coming at an earlier stage. And this was published, as I said, last year. Now, in the same paper, she pointed out the importance of identifying eGDM. So she said that the earlier screening will help to find out this eGDM. And eGDM shows significant differences in the clinical profile uh, because it is more severe than conventional GDM, more insulin resistant, higher blood pressure, triglycerides, perinatal mortality, neonatal hypoglycemia, and more need for insulin treatment. All this is what we found when we pulled all the data together. But if you take individual results, they were very confusing. And therefore, because most of them are retrospective studies, they're not prospectively planned studies. Now, a little uh, earlier, there was a paper by Emmanuel Atta, published in Current Diabetes Reports, where they did a meta-analysis of 13 cohort studies, which showed a greater relative risk uh, among early onset GDM, they called as late onset, which we call as conventional GDM. The perinatal mortality was more, neonatal hypoglycemia more, and insulin use was more. So exactly what uh, Hannah had uh, reported, Emmanuel had also reported earlier. So there seems to be agreement in the world literature regarding this. Now, in the STRIDE project, which I already referred to you, STRIDE is ethnic specific risk stratification early pregnancy for identifying mothers at risk of GDM. So this is abbreviated as a stratification of risk of diabetes in early pregnancy or, or others called as STRIDE. The STRIDE project was uh, done uh, in uh, South India and we had several collaborators that show you that. Our main aim was not to identify eGDM. What we wanted to do in STRIDE was find out who are the people who will develop GDM in the second trimester by screening in the first trimester and having some kind of a risk score. The advantage of STRIDE was one of the largest studies done on GDM. 3,000 women between 18 to 50 years were recruited before 16 weeks of gestation. And the good thing was we recruited them all very early. Now, these are the STRIDE investigators. So we had Professor Saravanan Ponasamy from University of Warwick. Uh, and we had Dr. Umar Ram from the Sita Clinic, Sita Pati Clinic and Hospital in Chennai, uh, apart from uh, Dr. Anjana and myself. But we also had collaborating sites uh, other sites in Chennai, EV Kalyani Medical Center, Andhra Mahila Sabha, Voluntary Health Services. And we had one uh, uh, group of hospitals in Hyderabad, the Fernandez Hospital. Plus, we had JIPMA uh, in Puducherry, representing a large government institute. Well, so you can see that we have private centers, we have government centers, we have uh, voluntary and charitable institutions, and we have them in Chennai as well as in Hyderabad and Puducherry. So it's a widespread uh, of collaborators and different types of patients. But what we did in STRIDE was 
they recruited these 3000 people and then 2700 of them underwent a fasting plasma glucose if it is less than 90 uh, they are normal okay some of them had between 92 to 125 we call them as early gdm okay and then some of them eight of them already had diabetes the fasting was more than 126 we excluded them so we want to study only the gdm now those who had normal fasting uh, so this group uh, which was uh, diagnosed early gdm remains as egdm now those who had normal less than 92 we screened them again uh, and for uh, at 24 to 28 weeks uh, by using the IADPSG criteria and when we did that we found that a uh, significant number of them were normal but we had women who had tested normal during the first trimester who have now developed GDM. Now this is a classical GDM or we call it conventional GDM. So you can see now we have a normal group, we have a conventional GDM group and we have an eGDM group and you can see the numbers are quite large 566, 359, 1000. 500. These are some of the largest studies on GDM which have been done in India uh, on this topic. Now, if you look at the clinical characteristics of the CGDM and the EGDM, uh, you can see that the EGDM are actually older, the booking weight is higher, the BMI is higher, waste is higher, the glucose levels are higher, even the A1C is higher. So you can see 5.1 in the normals, CGDM is 5.2, in EGDM is 5.3. Okay. And the venous A1C, we have done both point of care A1C as well as venous A1C. You can see straight away that they're all statistically significant. So the eGDM seems to have slightly more severe form of diabetes as well as obesity and other cardiometabolic risk factors compared to CGDM and of course compared to the normal glucose tolerance people. Now, what are the risk factors for eGDM in the STRIDE project that we saw? These were the risk factors which came out. HbA1c at booking came out strongly uh, as a risk factor. BMI, of course, was a strong risk factor. History of GDM in previous pregnancy was a risk factor. So these are the three risk factors for early GDM, which we picked up in this uh, particular study. And this is our own study. The first one I presented was a, a systematic review of all the studies. This is our own study in the STRIDE study. And this is under publication now. It has been submitted. Now, how do we screen for early GDM and whom do we screen for early GDM? Now, the American Diabetes Association says you do selective screening. If you have family history, if you have previous history of GDM, if you are obese uh, or you have some other uh, risk factor, then you screen. But they also say if you are in a high risk group and they include Indians in that, South Asians in that, and they say if you are in a high risk group, then you must screen everyone. Now, as far as Indian guidelines are concerned, the DIPSI guidelines, they say we, the, what DIPSI says is screen everyone because the prevalence of GDM is so high in India that everybody has to be screened. So universal screening should be done. Uh, the ADA, as I told you, only recommends if you are overweight and age is more than 25. But you can see, member of ethnic group with high diabetes prevalence, South Asian, they have clearly mentioned, Middle East and South Asia. So they are also recommending that we do screening for everyone. So the first message I want to tell you is screen everyone for GDM, all pregnant women. And now the second message I'm going to tell you is at the end of my talk that you should start early and should screen in the first trimester of pregnancy. Here are the DIPSI guidelines and note that the DIPSI guidelines were published in 2006. That means almost 17 years ago, Dr. Sheshaya and group have already said that all pregnant women need to be screened for GDM and this universal screening is something which we totally uh, support DIPSI in this uh, particular guideline. Okay. Now, which test to screen for early GDM? Should you use OGDT in the first, in the early uh, GDM? Of course, in conventional GDM is OGDT only. Now, in early trimester, first trimester when you are screening, should you use OGDT? In that case, should it be one step? Should it be two step? Should you use fasting plasma glucose alone? Should you use HbA1c? Should you? Should you use combinations of these? Right now, the guidelines are not clear. And maybe at some point after these papers are published, I'm going to refer to a couple of other papers. I would suggest that we wait for a year or so when lots more papers are going to come out. And then RSSDI can actually come out with clear guidelines to screen 
for early GDM. Right now, we can't do it because the papers are not published. And un until you have evidence, there's no point in simply putting out an opinion, which nobody will respect. So we will wait until all these papers get published, both national and international kind of papers get published, and then we can put out the RSCTA guidelines for early screening for GDM. Now, I want to talk about in the last part of my talk, I want to talk about a very, very exciting and important study. The study is called TOBOGAM. TOBOGAM stands for Treatment of Booking Gestational Diabetes Mellitus Study. Now, TOBOGAM is, is going to be a game changer. It's like the HAPO study. And uh, I'm very happy to inform you that the TOBOGAM is the first multi-center RCT for the diagnosis and treatment of early GDM. Although all the other studies which uh, in Hannah's systematic review we uh, published, uh, they were all observational studies. Uh, so epidemiological, observational, clinic-based studies, that's why so much of variation. Tobogam is the first study to look at early GDM in a systematic manner, screen in the same way across different centers. And then it asks the simple question, should you screen for early GDM? And should you treat early GDM? Is there any advantage in treating early GDM? Is there any disadvantage in treating early GDM? So many questions are being asked by this. The tobogam, believe me, is going to be a complete game changer as far as GDM is concerned. Now, why we are very passionate about this is that, you know, when the HAPO study was done, there was criticism that India is not involved, India is not involved, India is not involved, South Asia is not involved. In Tobogam, I'm happy to tell you that India is involved and we have played a very big role. In fact, uh, along with uh, Anjana, Kumaram uh, and myself, we represent India. So MDRF has played a big role and you can see the other uh, clinics. Most of them are in Australia, but we also have a, a few other uh, centers in, uh, in a few European countries. And uh, uh, so the... Um, uh, we, we have in Vienna and we have in, uh, in Sweden and a few other, Austria, and then we have India. But the main study is being done in Australia, just like the HAPO. In fact, it's a HAPO group of people only. The whole study is driven by Dr. David Simmons, whom you know was the main author of the IAD PSG, the HAPO study, internationally known from Western Sydney. And he is the main uh, architect of the Tobogam study and full credit uh, to him. Now, the Tobogam study, uh, as I said, has 16 study sites across Australia, Austria, Sweden, and in India, MDRF is part of that. Now, whom do we include? Singleton women uh, without pre-existing diabetes, uh, single pregnant women with risk factors, BMI more than 30, past history of GDM, macrosomia, first degree family history of diabetes, and of different ethnicity. If you had any one of this, and if you're pregnant, then you can get included in Tobogam. Now, a little complicated slide, but let me tell you that it has to be a proper RCT, okay? And that's why this paper is being given a lot of recognition. So what we did was, first of all, large numbers. So we had large number of uh, eligible women across all these uh, places. Now, if they had um, even fasting above 110, we excluded them, that, that becomes free diet. And if you suppose 126, of course, it's diabetes. So we excluded all those with pre-existing diabetes. If they did not have pre-existing diabetes, we have screened them before 20 weeks, so it's early GDM. And then we used the WHO 2013 criteria, which is the IAD phase three criteria. Okay? And there, what we did was, when we did the GTP, we had some women who were diagnosed to have GDM. 400 of them we included in the intervention arm. And the other 400 were in the control arm. Now you will ask, how after diagnosing GDM, uh, they are put in a control arm? Okay, it's an RCT. There is no evidence that treating uh, GDM uh, is beneficial. And I'll tell you later, the study is now showing positive results. So here afterwards, we can't do it after the uh, study is published. But in an RCT, if it is not standard of care, even to screen for early GDM, you can do that. So we had 400 in the intervention arm with GDM, 400 in the control arm. But 400, uh, we had 800 people who were decoys. That means they had no GDM at all, but they followed the same protocol so that the trial does not influence, like a placebo effect you do not get. Okay. 
and then we had uh, another 2400 on whom we did nothing we didn't have gdm and we didn't treat them also we didn't do anything they were just left off but this 800 had no gdm but they followed the entire protocol like this 400 and 400 so that there is no effect of the trial because you'll say oh just because you put them in a trial they responded not because of anything else so that is where the decoys comes it's a very very clever uh, uh, thing of dr david simmons and group and uh, this has been very much appreciated this uh, trial model now i'm very very happy to tell you that uh, this paper has just been accepted in new england journal of medicine uh, since the paper is not yet online um, I cannot unfortunately share the results. I was hoping that uh, by the time uh, this presentation comes up, the paper will be online and then I could have shown you all the results. But look for it, it should be out in the next two, three, four weeks. I don't know how long New England Journal takes. But uh, a publication in New England Journal with authors uh, from India uh, in the main author list uh, on GDM, uh, I think is something which is unprecedented. Uh, so we are very very happy and thankful to dr david simmons and the whole group for including india in this particular study now uh, i'll just tell you without showing the results what we found in tobogam that there is proof of benefit uh, treating egdm that means tobogam has shown that treating egdm is beneficial i'll stop with that i cannot tell you more about that also the natural history of egdm what happens to them in the second trimester and what happens to them after delivery all that is beautifully shown by Tobogam. it's a fantastic paper you should wait for it and uh, hopefully in another month all of you will be able to read it the beneficial effect of treatment of early gdm has been in an rct is done for the first time in the world nobody has done it, an rct on early gdm and this is the very first time in the world it's been done therefore it's a complete game changer you will find the ada easd and all the gdm groups rewriting the whole of GDM based on this uh, finding. And the future uh, Tobogam publication, we have several more in the, uh, in the press, and they'll be on cost effectiveness on screening, diagnosis, and treatment of early GDM. Series of papers are going to come out from Tobogam. So I'm going to actually stop here, ladies and gentlemen, by telling you that early pregnancy blood glucose screening for GDM is mandatory. You should do it. First of all, it helps to identify existing diabetes, pre-existing pre-diabetes, and on top of that, it will help you to identify early GDM. And this early GDM, if it is diagnosed, it should be treated. And that's what Tobogam says. But obviously more work is needed on eGDM, how to screen, where to screen, who to screen. All these questions will come up now. Every uh, trial, every big project which comes out will raise more questions and more studies will have uh, to be done. But from Tobogam itself, I hope many of these questions will be answered because it's such a beautifully thought about uh, study. Um, and uh, uh, therefore, the, and we also show that there is no risk at all. That is the other thing which uh, Tobogam showed. By treating them, there were no side effects. The children, that, uh, the fetus was not small for age or small for weight or anything. There were absolutely no side effects. So it must really be treated. So the bottom line from this presentation is early GDM or eGDM as we call it must be identified and treated. Thank you very much for oh. patiently.